how do you stay so positive? I've actually been asked that a lot lately, and I think that's pretty awesome because then that means that I am putting out that good, positive energy for others. And I mean, you can't beat that, but you know, I do have my days and I do certainly have my moments when I don't feel so positive. So if that's the vibe that I'm putting out to other people, then I thought it would be kind of interesting to do a little soul searching and figure out what it is that I might be doing that actually does help me to stay positive. And so I uncovered uh, four things. So I wanna share those four things with you right now. And if you stick with me to the end, I actually thought of two more this morning as I was deciding to finally come and record this video. Um, so I wanna share those bonus ones with you as well because I do believe that the two at the end are something that every single one of us can and should do to stay positive. If you don't know me, my name is Elizabeth Peterson and I host the Inspired Classroom and I love working with my students in the classroom and also teachers in terms of arts integration strategies and SEAL social emotional artistic learning. And lately I've been really diving deep into teacher self-care and specifically creative ways we can think about teacher self-care. And if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe and that bell to be notified when a new video comes out because like I said, we're gonna be talking a lot about teacher self-care along with some great arts integration and SEAL strategies along the way. So the first thing is that I do what I love. And of course, first and foremost, that is teaching. I absolutely love teaching. I'm one of those people that knew uh, I wanted to be a teacher since I was really, really young. And I know that not everybody is that person. And so some of you probably came from, you know, a, a, maybe a different career or you figured out teaching was your calling a little later in life. But if you're a teacher, there was that point in your life where you just knew there was something inside of you that you just needed to do this job. And it's not an easy job. But if you have that desire somewhere deep inside of you, it helps to keep you going and helps you to stay positive. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves of why we're doing this crazy tough job. And I actually talk a little bit about that in the video called Finding Your Ultimate Why, which you may want to check out when you're done watching this. So what is so important about finding your why is that it just helps you to remember why you're doing what you're doing. And sometimes you don't find the joy and the positivity in what you do as a profession every day. But if you can hold on to that why and you can really remember that you do love what you do, <laughs> then that can help to keep you in a positive frame of mind. The other thing is sometimes you need to bring what you love into your life and maybe make some time for it a little bit more. For example, um, creating something. I think a lot of people, as they get older, they push that chance to be creative away from them and it's really important to create as an adult and that creation could come in so many different forms it could come in the form of the arts it could come in the form of um, cooking and things that you do for your family and creating vacations just even um, activities for your family or your friends to partake in i know a lot of people who enjoy creating just a beautiful atmosphere in their home and that's what brings them joy. So when you do things that you love, it can really just help you to remain positive. For me, you know, I I listen to music all the time and that definitely helps to keep my spirits up um, and it gives me an outlet for all kinds of different emotions. Um, but you know, I grew up creating music and playing the piano, but as I've grown older, um, my creation, my creative process has changed. And now what I love to do is create videos and create uh, resources for teachers and create events like 
the teacher retreats and the virtual teacher art retreat and creating those things actually excites me because it's something that I truly love to do. And I think without that outlet of creativity, um, I don't think I would be in such a good positive place because there's so many things that are pulling us in different directions, right? And so many ways that we can be down on ourselves and down on the things around us. So when you have something that you're creating and then you can see it to fruition and you can um, really appreciate that creative process, that is part of number one, which is doing what you love. All right, so let's take a look at number two. Number two is about scheduling me time or downtime. And this is really important because like I said, we're pulled in so many different directions and we're doing so many different things that it can be so easy to burn out. And so making sure that I have some downtime and knowing that inside my body that I need that downtime is so, important and beneficial for my health and i know it is for so many other people as well and the video i made called um well i i think of it as stop look and listen it's the a teach a teacher self-care strategy that works and it's called stop look and listen and in that one you have to really uh, understand what it is you need and for many of many people including myself I need some downtime. And I didn't realize that until this school year because this school year is a little different for me than others. So, you know, usually I'd go to school, come home, and then I would work on the other thing that I loved, which is doing work here on the computer and creating resources and events. And that would mean a lot of time at the computer. But this year it's a, a little different because I'm literally here at the computer all day with my students and then on top of that i need to continue working on the computer for the work with the inspired classroom and i gotta tell you i just need some breaks i need a break from the computer i need a break from the work that i'm doing as much as i love it i also need to make sure that i give myself some downtime and so over the last few months what i've been able to really put into play is a break and stopping what I'm doing and closing the computer and walking away and allowing myself to do something that I, you know, I kind of used to not do, which was just sit on the couch and watch some TV and just let my brain and my body just have some downtime that's just for me to relax and do a little bit of nothing. And so finding that time is just so important. For me, it might be five minutes in the afternoon or it might be in the evening <laughs> when um, I can just sit and watch a TV show or two and just chillax for a little bit. Now, number three is being able to give myself some time in the morning. And this is so important. Um, I remember <laughs> finding, kind of finding out about this um, mom strategy, if you will, when I was a new mom and realizing that in order for me to have some sanity during the day, I had to make sure I was up before everybody else, right? You have to, had to get myself ready and in the right frame of mind before my babies or my toddlers were waking up and I had to make sure that the coffee was on and, you know, all those other responsibilities that comes with life. And so that is something that I have continued to do even now that my kids are teens and, you know, I definitely have a little bit more alone time, but this morning time, having this AM routine is so important. In fact, the morning routine is one of the three routines that I think every teacher should establish for themselves. And I talk about it in the workshop, one word, three routines for teachers. And you can check that out. I'll put the link to that workshop down in the description. It's a really good one. Um, and so the morning routine for me is just a chance for me to 
get up and get myself in the right frame of mind, maybe do a little paper shuffling, you know, drink my cup of coffee, whatever it might be, just to get myself ready so that I can take on whatever comes my way. And just having that moment or moments of establishing my day is so beneficial for the rest of my day. It just gets everything off on the right foot and allows me to take on the rest of the day no matter what comes my way. (laughs) Now, number four is a big one. And this is something that I have been really working on over the last couple of years, as especially as I've been working on SEAL and um, in creating the SEAL teacher training course a number of years ago. And it's one of the most beneficial things that I think SEAL teachers learn inside the course. And that is, I really think I have a good handle on what I can and what I cannot control. And then I am able to focus on the things that I can control. This is a big one because so many adults just want to be able to um, have control of everything. And there are certain things that we just can't control. Uh, When we think about, you know, a school year, you know, there are things that the administration has control over. We have no say as teachers. We just have to go along with what's being put in front of us. And so at that point, what we can do is take what we've been given and figure out how we can adapt to that and what are things that we can have control over and what can we do to make this year the best year that we possibly can. So this comes in all shapes and sizes of things that we can and can't control. We can't control the world around us, but we can control our reactions to it. We can't control the things that are happening in our society, but we can control, you know, how much we expose ourselves to it. We can control how much device time we have. Um, So there are always things that you can have control over that will really be beneficial to your overall well-being. And then you just got to let go of some of those things that you don't have control over. And once you realize that, and once you really are able to wrap your head around that idea, life does get a little bit better and your outlook on it can be so much more positive. All right, so let's take a look at a bonus way to be positive. And I think this is something that everyone can do and everyone should do. And that is to have a venting buddy. Now I've talked about venting buddies in blog posts and in uh, workshops. I really do believe that having a venting buddy is just so important. Now you may have a venting buddy at school or at home. I know when I was going to school every day, I had a couple of my friends who I just knew I could go to them at any time and just just let it out. And so when you are venting, you may not always feel like you're portraying or putting positivity out there, but you know what? It's so important for us to be able to have that outlet to let it out so that you can so that you don't have to hold it in so much right because if we hold things in then that's going to make us not a very positive person (laughs) so being able to let it out and have someone who will actually listen maybe uh, commiserate with you for a moment or two that's always good too but just having someone who will actually stop what they're doing and listen to you sometimes that's just all you need. Now, I had a couple of friends in school that I would do this with all the time. Now, sometimes they get texts from me instead, since I don't see them in person so much anymore. But I do also now use my husband as a venting buddy because I just sometimes need to just let it out and say what I need to say to get it off my chest and allowing that Uh, to be released. It's really a place to have it be released is what is really causing me to continue to be a positive person. 
And if you don't have a person that you can vent to, I know some people who vent to their pets. I mean, that is okay as well. Or maybe you have a journal and you like to journal. That is a perfect place to do some venting as well. So having a venting buddy, no matter what form, is a really important thing for staying positive. And I have one more bonus way that you can really try and stay positive. And that is every once in a while, you really need to just take in the moment that you're in. Okay, so yeah, that's called being present, right? Being in the moment. But I want to challenge you to think about it just a little bit differently, okay? Because I find this um, happening to me quite a bit uh, lately, especially. And that is like, all of a sudden, I'll hear um, my daughter playing the guitar. She'll be strumming on the guitar in her bedroom. Or my son might start playing on the piano downstairs. Or um, I might actually, you know, see some someone I love just smiling really big or start to laugh. And I have been able to pause myself, right? Put, put the world on pause almost and just take in that moment. And it's such a nice way to, you know, it's like that Kodak moment, right? It's just such a nice way to really take in the positive energy and those positive vibes and let it soak in. And even if I don't remember every single positive moment that I've paused for, I remember that feeling. I do believe that even if you can't remember all the instances that make you happy, if you can suck in that energy and just let that be part of you, then that can really help you to stay positive. And your your body and your brain will remember that feeling, if not remember that moment. It's kind of like what Ferris Bueller said. What did he say? I want to get this right. Actually, I want to get this right. All right, so I'm going to take a second and look this up. All right, Ferris Bueller. Okay, here it is. Wise words. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. I think we need to take that quote, really suck it in and keep it in our pocket because it's just so true. You know, if we just let life go on and on and on and we don't take in those moments and we don't really stop and smell the roses every so often, then yeah, we're going to walk around with a pretty negative outlook on life. Okay, so... All right, so I'm seriously having one of those moments right now. I can hear my daughter playing music from my high school teen life. <laughs> and I can just tell that she's enjoying it. I mean, how, how nice is that? Got to suck that in. <laughs> All right, so let's review some of those things that can help you to be positive, help us all to be positive, okay? So number one is do what you love. And if you need to, stop and bring some of those things back into your life. That's really important. Number two, schedule some downtime for yourself. Just to let your body and your mind recuperate from all the craziness that may be going on in your life. Number three, uh, give, give yourself, like I give myself some time in the morning to just set myself up for, for a good day. And then if, you know, something happens during the day, at least I've set myself up and I can reset <laughs> the next day. Number four, have a handle on what you can control and what you cannot control. And then focus on those things that you actually can control. And then a couple of bonuses that I think anyone can do. One, have a venting buddy so that you can release some of that stuff that you just have on your mind and get it off your chest. And that second bonus is following what Ferris Bueller says, and that is to take in the moment. When something comes up, really put yourself on pause and take in that moment because those are the moments that can truly carry you through day to day, week to week, <laughs> and year to year. 
I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. If you want to hear more about some just great ideas for teacher self-care and for bringing the arts and, and social emotional artistic learning into what you do as a teacher and what you do for your students, be sure to hit subscribe and click that bell so that you're notified when a new video comes out. All right, I can't wait to see you in the next one.